Hello, this is part of my series on my journey uh, with solar energy and solar panels. So on the 24th of August, um, we had our installation completed. So we had our 12 solar panels put on the roof. We had the inverter fitted and that was all connected up to the battery. So just to remind you what we've got, we've got 12 Q-cell 9 plus um, solar panels on the roof which will give a maximum power output of 4.6 to 4.7 kilowatts and that's in perfect conditions. Uh, that's going down into a Solis 5 kilowatt uh, hybrid inverter and then that's go, uh, feeding into our house and also into a 5 kilowatt DC power drive battery. So at the beginning of each month, I'm going to look back at the previous month and see how much energy we produce, how much it's cost us with energy import from the grid, and just see how much money we're saving. Is it re um, realistic compared to what the payback periods were concerned? So this is the idea behind these videos. And as I say, I'll release them at the beginning of each month, looking back at the month before. So this video is going to be a little bit skewed because obviously we had it the system fitted in the last week of August so we've only got a week's worth of information. It's also slightly skewed because as I say we had it fitted on the 24th it was the installation was finished about 3 p.m and then we went on holiday and drove down to the um, New Forest and we didn't come back until the evening of the 28th so again we the house was basically just ticking over in that time. So I'm pulling the information from this so how much uh, energy is um, being created from the roof um, how much battery charge and discharge and how much self usage we have so self use I'll define now is energy we're using from the roof at the time so if it's midday and we turn the oven on and it uses all the power from the roof that's what self use power is and then we've got dis battery discharge which is when the house is being powered from discharge, discharging the battery. Um, I've also calculated the amount of energy or power, no, energy we're importing from the grid. So I'm getting this information from the Solis Cloud, so that's the app that comes with the inverter. Unfortunately, it doesn't give particularly precise data. So in the case of the grid import, only does it to one significant uh, to the whole number there's no decimal points so it tells you imported one kilowatt hour of electricity even if you've only imported sort of 0.1 of a kilowatt hour so as soon as it registers import it tells uh tells you you've imported one kilowatt hour when it hasn't so what i've done for the import and as you'll see in the graph moment i've called it real import i've looked how much uh, money has been spent on our smart meter each day and calculated it back from there. So we're lucky at the moment um, that we fixed our electricity bills at 19.585p per kilowatt hour until March 2024. Obviously with the current price hikes, um, the potential energy bill it can be much, much higher than that. And we also have a stand-in uh, charge of 24p. But as I say, that's going to be fixed for the next uh, year and a half. So this graph here um, shows what uh, our energy uses is or what energy is being produced by the house. So let's ignore the 24th because that's when it's fitted is we don't have really much to show from that. But if we look for at what's happening on the 25th, the blue is the energy we've exported back to the grid. So on that day, we produced about 25 kilowatt hours um, of solar energy. Um, we haven't yet got a SEG tariff because the scaffolding only came down uh, yesterday, which was the 7th of September. That's when the work was complete. Um, we haven't completed the work, therefore, we haven't got the, um, haven't made the final payment and we haven't got the documentation ready for uh, setting up SEG payments. So, we're not, anything we export at the moment, we're not getting paid for. But as you can see, the blue is how much we've exported. So it's just under 20 kilowatt hours on the 25th. Uh, the yellow is the battery discharge. So that's how much power was 
or energy was used from our battery during that day so that's when there was no solar being produced so i.e at night uh the green is the self-use so that as i say we were away on that day so the only real power we had was things like the we left our internet on and we have some google homes around that were left on and the fridge was left on so that was the power being used or the energy being used by those devices throughout the day um and as i say the um or when it was the energy being used from solar by the house is the best way to put that so the next day after that the 26 it was a little bit cloudy so we had less uh, generation still more than enough to power the house um, and you can see that the rest of the trend for the house so when days when we have less power uh, energy generation is when it's been cloudier so the red is the energy import and we've called it the real import so on those first two days i think the system was still learning the house so it was importing energy really when it didn't need to there was enough in the battery and there was enough being produced with solar so it was just adapting to house because then for the rest of the time we haven't had any uh, generation so what i've also done is taken the battery discharge and self-use which is power that we would normally have to use from the grid worked out how much uh, energy that was and then multiply that by the um, our rate per kilowatt hour and so therefore in August just over that last week we saved ourselves a total of eight pounds eighty seven um, and because of that two kilowatt hours that we had to import in that last week we spent about 42p um, on electricity that's excluding the stand in charge so we can't do anything about the standing charge we're not going to disconnect our house from the grid we're not producing enough energy to be self-sufficient and also in case of emergency we still want to be connected to the grid and therefore we have to pay the standing charge so that's not a particularly good representation of what's going on obviously it's a very small data set it's only a few days at the end of august where we did have quite a lot of sun so it's going to be interesting to see what happens when I do this next video on this topic at the end of uh, or at the beginning of October, where we look at the usage through September. What we are would we also be expecting that we're going to get less energy generation through the darker months as we have less daylight hours. So it'll be interesting to see where the effects of that is and then how much we have to import to compensate for that. Um, I should also point out at the end of this video that we are trying to adapt our lifestyle. So things like the washing machine, the dishwasher is going on during the day where normally they would go on during the night and also we are sort of changing our cooking habits so on days which are brighter we use in the oven so we're planning our meals that way and we're making sure the oven goes on during the day and uh, on days when it's cloudier and we can't cook during the day we have an, um, an evening meal um, we've been using the gas hob so that's something else to bear in mind Anyway, if you like this video, please subscribe to keep up to date with our journeys. Um, I'll be making some videos about the science behind solar panels and inverters. Um, I'll be looking at what data the app actually shows to say what you gain from there. So please subscribe and I'll see you again soon.